All right, in this lecture, we're going to learn about archiving our files in a Unix environment. This is simple, similar to uh, zip files or files with .zip extension in a Unix environment, I mean, I'm sorry, in a Windows environment. Uh, we're basically going to take a bunch of files and collect them together into one so that we can transfer them all as one or perhaps compress them for long-term storage. The standard way to do this on a Unix machine is to use something called a tape archive, which uses the command tar. Um, it can extract from many other types of uh, archive or compression systems, and I listed them there, tar, packs, CPIO, zip, jar, AR, CD-ROM images, ISO images. Uh, we use the dot .x option to extract them. Uh, we can also create tar files, and typically in a Unix environment, this is what we do. We just create a tar file, even though it has a capability to create other ones. Uh, and with that, we'll use the dot .c option. So I'll go ahead and give you an example of, of how you do that. Uh, if you see here in the directory, we have two files, loop.py and testfile.txt, and two directories, my directory one and my directory two. So if we want to create a tape archive that contains this, uh, the contents of this directory, uh, what we could do is say tar dash c for create, uh, v for verbose. Uh, we don't have to use that option, but we could. f for file. We need to give it a name, so we'll say, uh, you say my archive dot tar, and then we'll just go ahead and use the wildcard asterisk to collect everything that's in the directory. And so if I hit return, you'll see it verbosely told me what went in there, and there it is. So if I were to actually remove, uh, say, loop.py, testfile.txt, and remove directory, my directory one, my directory two, you can see that the only thing left is the archive, and now I can extract the contents of that archive. So I'm going to use tar, this time dash x, vf, and now you see everything is restored as it was. So typically, uh, one reason to use a tape archive would be if you want to transfer files to a different computer, a multitude of files, uh, you can easily uh, send them as one, one file through a tape archive. But usually we want to also compress that file, make, make the transfer faster, or perhaps we're storing these for long-term storage and we don't want to take as much space on our computer. So um, the typical Unix way, there's two types of compression, the kind of standard uh, old way is, is to use the gzip compression, um, and we can uh, extract with gunzip, and then we also have bzip2, which is a newer type of compression that uh, is actually, uh, usually produces uh, smaller, smaller uh, archives when we compress it with bzip2. So to give you an example of that, um, we can uh, use gzip to uh, zip archive myarchive.tar, and you'll see it added a, a .gz extension to the archive. If we do an ls minus la, you can see that uh, that myarchive.tar takes up about uh, 1061 uh, bits in space. So let's see how it does when we do a bzip compression on it. So the first thing we'll do is unzip to show you how that works. Um, my archive. Sorry. And uh, there you can see the un uncompressed size is 2480. So now if we do a bzip, so bzip2 my archive. And now do we do an ls minus la? We see 1321. Um, so for some reason, what I said before is actually wrong. This is a little bit strange and quite embarrassing, but it's actually the first time I've ever seen uh, the bzip2 not not compress further than the gzip. So anyway, uh, you can see there that it puts the bz2 extension on, and we can unzip that as well. Be unzip to my archive. Okay. 
Now typically, we can create the archive and do the compression in one step. Uh, there's three ways to do this. We can use zip, uh, which is actually the, the same type of compression that uh, you know that the standard zip.zip .zip file extension in Windows uses. Um, and so we can zip and we can extract with unzip. That actually creates the archive and compresses at the same time. And then uh, we also have uh, tar plus gzip or tar plus bzip2. We can do this in one step. So uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate all of those real quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove myarchive.tar. So we're, le we're left with what we started with. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it in one, one step now. So I can say tar, create. I'm going to say uh, z for a gzip file, vf, and then give it a name, myarchive.tar.gz, and collect everything in the directory. And there we have it. Okay. And we can also go back to this and we have there to, to change that to bz2. All we'll do is change this to bz2 and change the z to a J, and that'll give us a B, BZ2 archive, and there they are again, and you can see it's, it is larger, so this is a little strange. Um, we can also do the straight zip, so this time we'll say zip loop.py, my directory 1, my directory 2, and test file. And I think you, there we need to give it a name as well. So we'll give it a name, my zip archive. Zip. And there it is. So this is how we would archive files in a Unix environment.